a las mini. Vanderman's diary. A curious discovery. I can hardly believe the truth of what I'm about to relate, and yet my senses have not deceived me. This grimoire on my desk stands as an undeniable proof that all of this has happened. It all began when the elevator renovations were completed. It is truly an antique masterpiece bequeathed to me by the castle's previous owners, but no one was able to tell me how far down it went. What exceptional treasures could be hidden right there, beneath the very foundations of the castle in which I've lived for so many years? I didn't want to wait for the return of my husband, sadly away at war, to find out. So it was alone, trembling with impatience, excitement, and a touch of apprehension, that I took the elevator, despite the protests of the workmen. They finally managed to convince me, however, and one of them followed me, rifle in hand. I couldn't help but feel a profound disappointment. As we halted in the room where the workers had established their camp to conduct renovations on the lower level of the elevator, my eyes beheld nothing but a single main room and two smaller annexes, their walls crumbling under the weight of various tools and even makeshift bunks. There was nothing more to discover than the rooms they'd already occupied. I was about to go back upstairs when I felt a breeze on the back of my neck. In one of the annexes, a crack had opened up in the wall, revealing a narrow passage into the darkness. Grabbing a lantern, I made my way through the tunnel leaving my chaperone behind. Nearly stumbling at every step, heart pounding, I laid eyes upon the most marvelous sight. A gigantic cavern, rock walls reverberating the waves of a majestic waterfall, and a ravine so deep it was impossible to discern the bottom. Fortunately, a wooden bridge crossed the ravine, guiding me towards a door on the opposite wall, which compelled me to continue my exploration further. 
Continuing my exploration, I stumbled upon ruins that seemed to be of Roman origin. In a vast chamber, an imposing statue of Atlas was supporting the ceiling, and faced a meticulously carved bath nestled into the floor. Undeniably, this room exuded a certain grandeur. But the most important part was in the next one. It was an amphitheater, overgrown with wild vegetation, its ceiling shattered. Two altars stood in the center. One was empty. On the other rested a strange grimoire, the very one that lies beside me as I write these words. Its dark binding, adorned with elegant metal embellishments, was basking in the gentle light filtering through the ceiling. These embellishments shaped a strange face in the center of the cover, and I couldn't resist staring at it. For how long, I couldn't say. It was as if I was hypnotized, called by this grimoire, this face that seemed to be staring back at me. Unconsciously, I reached out and took hold of it. A gentle voice suddenly whispered in my ear, Behold the power of the universe, child of the creator of existence.
Lucia Vanderman's diary, the creator of existence. Two months have passed since I first discovered the grimoire. Delving into its ancient pages, I've been able to learn secrets that would ordinarily be beyond human comprehension. But an unimaginable power emanates from it. A mysterious aura surrounds it and beckons me, and as I open it, the words it contains seem to swirl and the patterns draw themselves, until finally they form sentences and drawings that are simplified for the human mind, yet they are explaining intricacies that I can't tell whether it's magic or perfected science. The grimoire seems almost alive. As I turned a page, I discovered who it belonged to, the great Re-Athanen. She who was born along with the universe, an unprecedented cosmic entity, companion of the creator of existence. During long chapters, Re-Athanen would describe to me the extraordinary power of this creator of all things, from destruction comes life. From his will all things are born. He is the very embodiment of what we call God. A creator of immeasurable power. Even more than omniscience, he knows everything, for he is the origin of everything. We live only by and for his will. We die only by his judgment. But he is no god. He is the scientist, and we are his subjects, his experiments. We are but wretched beings compared to the immensity of the universe, mere particles of dust among those he has created and observes, particles of dust that are destroying themselves. A profound realization washed over me. It was time for him to reset it all. Salvation, if any, lay in the cessation of everything. Thanks to the grimoire and Riathanen's whispers, I can call this creator back within the universe. I cannot allow such precious knowledge to remain easily accessible to everyone. I will take the opportunity of the great library's renovation to make it the sanctuary of the human race's knowledge. Mundane and futile books shall find no place within its walls. Only those worthy will find a place in here. The great grimoire shall rightfully stand at its center, preserving its unutterable secrets for those who can truly comprehend its significance.
everybody, my name is Tiny Box Tim. Lucia Vanderman's Diary, The Soul Ritual. I've made great progress toward the ritual chamber. The hardest part was to find a receptacle powerful enough to replace the crystal on the second pedestal, where I discovered the grimoire. But I finally found it. The heart of my most fervent follower, and mine as the creator's intermediary. However, two final elements were essential for the ritual of calling the creator. A soulless body, and a pure heart, filled with love. As I wondered how to obtain all this, the answer formed itself on the pages of the grimoire. Riathanin could manifest herself to separate my soul from my body. At the end of all things, only the souls of the Creator's adepts would prevail. Will I be able to do such a thing? I closed the grimoire. A chill running down my spine. Could I truly sacrifice my humanity? My husband returned from war just a week ago. We cherished every moment together to make up for the time we lost. He was exhausted, but so happy to have me back, just like I was. However, the joy of our reunion was short, as he quickly started to notice changes in my behavior and in the castle. After a few seconds' hesitation, I finally told him about my discovery of the grimoire and the renovation of the great library. All the books had disappeared from the castle, except in the entrance hall to ensure that we could welcome our guests. I hoped he would understand the importance of my mission, and that he would stand by my side. Riathanin and the Creator must return to us, and if we can gain access to eternity, I don't want to do it alone. But my dear Elliot looked up at me with horror in his eyes. I hastened to explain to him the Creator's duty, the fate awaiting this dying universe while assuring him that we could survive it together. I understood in that instant that the pure, loving heart I needed was his. He insulted me called me crazy, threw the grimoire to the ground, and stormed out of the castle, leaving me only a note. I have awaited his return for hours, then days, in vain. As I was lying in my bed, tears streaming down my face, the grimoire opened, and the soul separation ritual formed again on its pages. I looked at it for only a brief moment before making my decision. My body was turning black, and Riathanin explained that this was the Creator's blessing, facilitating the separation of my soul the more I consulted the pages. Grief gave me enough despair to resort to the ritual. I had to save my soul before I could find a way to bring my husband back, no matter how long it took. The amnesia potion he took might offer an unexpected advantage, Perhaps he unwittingly left a way for me to call him back to me. If he can't remember me, or what I told him about the Creator and Riathanin, it could ease his return to the castle. Elliot, my love, I will do whatever it takes to save the both of us, even if it takes an eternity. We will find salvation amidst the end of all things.
Know that I love you deeply, Elliot Vanderman. And I will never give up on bringing you back to me.
beloved husband. As you can see, I have quite changed since we last met. My soul has transcended this ephemeral body. When all things disappear, I will remain. But you, my beloved, you chose to run away for two years. I implanted those dreams within your mind, guiding you back to me like a lost lamb. I can save you, my love. I offer you salvation. I can free your soul from the chains of your body, and with the help of your pure, loving heart, I shall call the creator of all things at last. He who brought forth this universe with a cosmic explosion, and we shall disappear in the same way. Just hold still, my love. The pain you will endure will be nothing compared to the greatness you shall reach. <gasps> At last! Come to us, great intelligence. Let the universe be consumed by your magnificent wrath. May the stars be extinguished. May the void claim dominion on all things. Only you shall remain, O oh great intelligence. Hello everybody, my name is Tiny Box Tim! <laughs>